Hello students, Ashley Ritter here with Business Career Services. And today I'm excited to come to you for our Launchpad Employer Spotlight Series. Um, today I'm joined by someone uh, very exciting. He's actually an alum. And so I'm really looking forward to diving in and talking about his career story for you to hear someone else's journey. So that is our hope today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce him and read his bio if it doesn't make him uh, feel too on the spot here. Uh, I'm joined by Mr. Brian Kurth. So Brian is a serial entrepreneur. He created Revere Software in 2015. And Revere is actually the nation's leading skill-based volunteering software in the social impact sector enabling its corporate and foundation clients to private label and personalize their virtual and in-person post-COVID pro bono programs. Brian was also the founder and president of Vocation Vacations, dubbed America's dream job matchmaker by CNN in 2010. The company provided career mentorship experiences to people across the United States for more than a decade. As its chief promoter, Brian was an on-air contributor for NBC, CNBC, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, and NPR, and featured in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and oh, the Oprah Magazine, among others. Earlier in his career, Brian served in corporate product marketing and business development roles at AT&T. Brian earned a BA from the University of Wisconsin-Madison triple majoring in political science, history, and international relations, and has an MA from Loyola University Chicago in political science. In his spare time, you can find Brian listening to live music, traveling, hiking, and kayaking. So Brian, we're so thrilled to have you with us. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. It's great to be back among Loyola folks. Yeah, you're um, kind of you're, you're back at your alma mater, just virtually. So, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah. Well, I love getting to read your bio because I think it really demonstrates to students that, you know, our journeys have many different steps along the way. So let's start off with where you are now before going backwards. I'd love to just hear a little bit about your business today and what kind of work you're in. Yeah. Well, Revere Software is a skills-based volunteering platform. And you know, what does that mean? Well, it, it, it is what it sounds like, skills-based volunteering. So our clients are mostly corporations, some philanthropic foundations, some, in, some folks in higher education, including Loyola. Um, and they host their programs that connect, on the most part, their nonprofit partners across the globe with their corporate employees for skills-based volunteering. So nonprofits oftentimes can't afford to hire a software engineering team. They may not be able to afford marketing support. They may not be able to afford someone to come in and help them for, with financial planning for the next year. Mm -hmm. They're able to tap our clients' employees for free pro bono yeah. services. And so our clients, our corporate clients are our paying clients. And then the end users, the nonprofits, the students, the professors, the um, purpose-driven entrepreneurs all get those services for free. Wow. So it, there's a huge feel-good factor. Um, and, uh, and with COVID, it really things, things really hit um, a stride this year when, you know, even my favorite story is that, you know, the country of Togo um, the healthcare ministry needed support in doing data analysis before COVID hit their country. Mm -hmm. They went on a, Tableau Software is one of our clients. They went to Tableau, found a, a woman, an employee who would able to assist them. And so that's an example of how, you know, kind of gives you goosebumps of how things can work where somewhere, someone halfway around the world in a crisis is able to get the needed services they needed, in this case, data analysis and visualization um, from an employee of Tableau Software in Seattle, Washington. So that's what we do. Wow, that is that is brilliant. And I, I love hearing that also because again, having worked uh, with students I, I, and alumni, one of the biggest questions is always, 
what is out there? What kind of work is out there? And sometimes we, we can't even imagine the kind of connections that are happening. So I think your work really demonstrates that kind of intersectionality of industry. So yeah. no, I, it's true. And, and Loyola has a great platform portfolio, I should say, of alumni champions, as they call them, on LU Connect. So, mm -hmm. which is powered by Revere. So for all of you seniors, yeah, and even if there are company. any juniors out there, you know, please, you know, go out. I'm one of the champions out there ready to, to provide you support and career guidance uh, on LU Connect. And, um, you know, we do it for free because we want to help you all. Um, yeah. You know, get to, we, we've all been there. Yeah. So, well, and we didn't get there alone. So we're, we're here, you know, those of us champions out on LU Connect are here to help you. Yeah, well, speaking of career guidance, I think that's a really good uh, thing for us to dive into here a little bit. You know, I can see in your bio, you clearly didn't start off saying, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a business person. You were studying something very different. So can you yes. share just a little nutshell about how, what your journey looked like and how it took shape? Yeah, you know, and I think it, I look back and there, there are days, I'm not gonna lie and say there are days that I wonder what if. What if I had gone on and finished my PhD in political science at Loyola? I finished my master's, it was part of the PhD program. I was in, you know, intending to go get the, the full on PhD. But somewhere along the line, you know, I, I decided that, um, you know, I kind of was exhausted of school, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I started looking at what was out there. Um, and also the timing um, for me, it was, um, I'm dating myself. It was 1991 when I finished the program. So I finished technically January, 1992. Well, if you remember what was happening then, the so and I was a poli-sci major, Right. This was, this was big, particularly. Yeah, here. totally. This is, you know, the Berlin Wall had come down a couple of years earlier and the Soviet Union was collapsing. I'm a poli-sci guy. And yet I, I didn't really know it, but I had this entrepreneurial spark inside of me that I hadn't quite recognized yet. And to this day, I don't exactly remember how it happened, but I was somehow connected with a professor at a technical institute in Tallinn, Estonia. I had decided in my mind that I wanted to um, basically explore um, what was happening in the world at that time. And, and for those, you know, you guys just graduating, you know, I lived under a period where, you know, it was the Cold War. We were at constant fear that we were going to be at war with the Soviet Union. Right. So for me, as a young, I had taken worked a couple of years before going to grad school. So I was 25. And, you know, to go to the former Soviet Union, just as it had broken up, um, and go work mm -hmm. for this professor in Tallinn, whose students, and this is really key for all these folks, mm -hmm. students were starting their first business or a business. And oh. but it was one of the first businesses in Estonia. Estonia oh. is a tiny little country near St. Petersburg, Russia, mm -hmm. just over, and it had been taken over years before. Mm -hmm. So I went over and helped them set up an office automation firm, which was a retail operation. And um, we're talking copiers, fax machines, 1992, keep yeah, in mind. Right. And um, the Soviets had just cut off the Estonians, so there was no oil for heat. Um, I had my own tiny little apartment, but I had to go out and stand in the babushka lines, you know, yeah, as yeah. all the grandmas did, you know, mm -hmm. and they always wondered, mm -hmm. you know, who's this young American guy? Yeah. My point of all this story is, is that that was the early zig to my zag career. Mm. You know, I have had a, um, an interesting, not at all straightforward career. And I would encourage all of you to don't be afraid to zig and zag. Yeah. I have zero regrets. Like I say, I sometimes wonder what if I had finished my PhD. I'll probably mm -hmm. always wonder what if, but that's different from regretting. Right. And I have no regrets to this day, 29 years later, mm -hmm. um, 
I am still friends with all those folks in Estonia. I'm still friends with a couple of the Americans that were also working there at the same time. And we're all planning a 30th reunion next year oh, in town, wow. Estonia. Wow. So my point is, again, mm. make your life interesting. Don't, mm. don't always take this, the, this, the safe route. Don't always follow what, and things change. You know, right. when I started the program, this has no issue at all with Loyola University. Mm. I changed during the program. The Loyola right. didn't change. The program didn't change. Right. I just well, suddenly realized, I don't know if I want to get my full PhD. Mm -hmm. I think I want to go into business. Well, and I think that is such a good example of, you know, you, you followed your interest and you took a very strategic risk, right? You said, you know, this is going to, this is a risk, but there's something meaningful here for me. So let me follow it, right? And so on some level, I think, so many of us feel like our careers need to be one path or we need to know exactly what's next. And sometimes the way to get to what we want to be doing is to start doing what we want to do now, only one step at a time, right? Different versions of it as yeah. we go. And so for you at that point, it was going to Tallinn, Estonia, which I've been to, by the way. And, uh, and then, but then you continued on and you went and you worked at at and and mm -hmm. it sounds like you, you continued to find this entrepreneurial business side of yourself. And so I think that's one thing I would love to hear just a little bit more about is, you know, what sort of advice might you have for, for students who don't know exactly what they yeah. want to do, but maybe they have an interest in entrepreneurship. Yeah. Well, combine the two. Um, the, in, in, by that, I mean, you can become what's called, and some of you listening, watching, may have heard of the term intrapreneur right. within a corporation. Um, where I ended up, you know, 1992, when I came back then from Estonia, the, the country was in a, uh, in a recession and I didn't have any, a ton of experience. So I couldn't go into the area that I ultimately wanted to go into, which was product management, which is where you're building things, you're building companies, you're building a program within, even within a corporation. Right. So I couldn't go right into that. So I first went into sales and got to know the products, got to know the product lines and, um, and made really decent money doing it. Mm -hmm. While doing that, I then got the experience and the exposure to where I ultimately wanted to go, which is product management. And that's where mm -hmm. I ended up. So this history poli sci guy ends up in product management at you know a, a fortune 500 and i did the corporate climb and here's the key piece going back to what you had asked or mentioned before is the fact that you can create this you can be an entrepreneur it's not the same as being an entrepreneur i get it but but it's training wheels mm -hmm. and it'll it allow you to test drive your dream job if your dream job is being an entrepreneur or you think it is you're going to be able to test the waters and you're then going to be able to ask yourself as an entrepreneur in a corporation. Now, imagine myself creating something like this, a program, a product, a, a service. If I didn't have in-house legal support, if I didn't have in-house financial support to build right. it, if I didn't have in-house support from the finance department to help me build the Excel spreadsheets and the business models, because I'm, I'm not so great at that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if the answer is, okay, I'm, I'm strong enough mentally to go off and, and become an entrepreneur because it does take mental strength there. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean just like smarts. I'm talking about emotional intelligence mm -hmm. to be an, a, a true entrepreneur. You have to be resilient. You have to be flexible. Mm -hmm. If you're not a flexible person, entrepreneurship is not going to be for you. So let's, let's actually dive into this, this piece of it, because I'm actually, I'm getting really interested in this. So I'm hearing you say entre or that entrepreneurship could be something to consider, which is essentially for those listening who may not know, it's, it's working within a company, but mm -hmm. to, to create new ideas, concepts, innovation, and to kind of adopt an entrepreneurial mindset mm -hmm. in a, an organized space. And that's um, usually still product management, program management, um, certainly anything within IT, you know, okay. if, you're, if you're in development, software development. Okay. If you're in operations, maybe not as much, but software development, you're building things. So I highly recommend those areas. And it okay. doesn't have to be technology. So then let's say that someone is thinking now that they may at some point want to be an entrepreneur. 
you were starting to get into this. What what do you think are the 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 ingredients or the pieces to the puzzle that someone needs to make sure is within their own, uh, you know, willingness to do mindset, character qualities mm -hmm. to be able to really be an entrepreneur? Well, first and foremost, you have to have passion. You have mm. to. If you, I mean, it sounds so cliche, but it's true. You know, you, you have to, and, and by passion, I don't mean like every living, breathing moment, you just exude passion. Believe right. me, I do right. not. You know, <laughs> right. right. When, when we have a technology issue or if I'm, you know, working on finance, which as I mentioned earlier, is not my forte, mm -hmm. you know, um, legal bores mm -hmm. the heck out of me, but it's a necessary evil of being an entrepreneur. So, but you mm -hmm. have to have passion for the core of what mm -hmm. you're doing. That's critical. Um, and you really do have to have resilience, um, because things are not going to go the way that you thought, um, you have to be able to pivot. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you're creating a product or a service one way, and then you suddenly realize, oh, this isn't working. Well, you have a couple of options. You can just quit and go back into doing, you know, corporate life or whatever, you know, um, or start a different company, but there might be an opportunity to pivot. And most, most by far, um, companies that start out have pivoted at some point mm -hmm. to a certain degree, some drastically, some to a certain degree. Um, I put money on it that I don't know if any of you folks have um, listening and watching have been into, um, what's the accelerator? The uh, 1872, is that the name 1871, of it? 1871, I believe. 1871, <laughs> <Close, yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, that uh, if you were to interview folks at 1871 who mm -hmm. or, or alumni of 1871 mm -hmm. who are out a few years, mm -hmm. there's no doubt in my mind that I would put money on it that 80% of them have um, pivoted the company in some way um, mm -hmm. after they've mm -hmm. started it. And you just have to keep a positive attitude. Um, surround yourself with people who support you but speak truth to your mm. power, your entrepreneurial, passionate power. Yes. Okay. So that they hold up a mirror to you saying, you know, mm. is this really working for you at times? Mm -hmm. You um, have to be willing to hear the truth. You have to be willing. You don't want to surround yourself with a bunch of yes people who are, um, you know, that happened to me on one occasion um, where, you know, a loved one said, are you sure? Really? Mm -hmm. Because this, this, you're super passionate about it, but this might not work, you know, was one mm -hmm. area of location occasions. And he was right. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then on the flip side of that, you know, surround yourself with these good people who are there for you. Absolutely. Friends, family members, you know, whomever. Yeah. But also do not, do not surround yourself with naysayers. Um, Ooh, tell me more. Tell me more about this. So, you know, it's toxic to an entrepreneur. Um, naysayers, there's a great quote that I would, um, Ashley, you'll know it, but it's this long and I certainly don't have it memorized <laughs> uh, from, from Teddy Roosevelt of it's the man in the arena. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, folks listening, watching, Google it, look it up. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's the best quote out there about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you know, being in the arena, you're trying, you're doing something. Those who are naysaying are those who are too afraid. You, you're scaring them because you're doing something that they're too afraid to do. And so they are giving you, know, giving you a unsolicited advice that, you know, and, and reminding you of all the risks that you already know about. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So don't surround yourself with naysayers. If that naysayer happens to be, you know, a, a close family member or a spouse, that could be problematic. Um, yeah. And that's yeah. why there is breakups right. that do occur due to mm -hmm. entrepreneurial endeavors. But, um, you know, you, you need to surround yourself by truth speaking, positive thinking people around you who love you and support you and aren't going to just let you go on endlessly on, a, you know, in a folly, you know, mm -hmm. but but um, yeah, don't surround yourself with naysayers. Great, so I'm hearing here that being an entrepreneur takes an amazing amount of resiliency. And when I hear the word passion, I often think of the word commitment, right? Like you're, if you're passionate about something, you're really, you're, you're committed to the core. Like you said, you're willing to keep doing the work no matter what. Um, 
I have a plan B in place. Be willing right. to pivot. So the pivot, that's the other piece. And for those of you listening, if you're unfamiliar with the term pivot, it's just think about if you take a ball and you're on a, I never played basketball, but if you're on a basketball court and you need to go one way or the other way, right? You're, it's, it's a, it's a, a, a movement in a different direction. Um, and so the, uh, the ability to end pivots and other things to be flexible, um, and then uh, finally, I was hearing you say also it, 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 this piece around community. So for those of you listening who maybe aren't familiar with 1871, um, it's, it's an incubator essentially where people have the opportunity to grow their businesses in conjunction with other business mentors. And it's, it's kind of, uh, I believe, selective to be a part of. And so part of the idea here is that starting a business or starting up, it, it takes a lot of energy and, and personal energy. And so not just the, the stamina, but also the ability to surround yourself with people who, who deeply care, tell the truth, but then guarding yourself from too much negativity too quickly. So that is, that's, do I got it? You got it. Okay. And, and I would add that, that um, you know, we, we talked about this before the taping a little bit about testing the waters and, and you don't, this isn't binary. In other words, this isn't black and white. You don't have to do it all at once. Mm. You can find it with, with uh, well, for starters, while you're a student. So Loyola has a great program. I want to call it limited. Loyal Loyal limited. limited. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, so it lets you test the waters. Is mm -hmm. this something I want to do? You know, I think there's been historically, um, Bridget from Career Services had told me about it, and uh, I want to say there was a bike shop and a yeah coffee mm -hmm. house or something. Right. Like there's multiple businesses, and you really get to be hands on with. Like, I'm almost amazed sometimes when I hear the kinds of things the students are doing because they are they are managing stakeholders, budgets, yeah. staff. Yeah. Right. And, and, yeah, feeling and it's stressed. unusual. This isn't typical of, of universities of having such a program. So if you are thinking of, of such a thing, um, that of course, during this, the cat is deciding to, I don't know if you can hear him. So ignore the cat in the background. Oh, that's okay. We, we, uh, we welcome all the, the animals like, and background. Like, that's, we all like, are doing like it. Like right in the now. pandemic. Like right, pandemic. right, 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 right. Um, but anyway, back to, to Loyola Limited, you know, mm -hmm. if you are a student and you are thinking of an entrepreneurial life, even if you are a poli sci major, like I am, mm -hmm. um, you know, check that out. But then even beyond that, let's say it's 10 years from now, you've been working in corporate America for 10 years and you have this idea and you have the passion and you're thinking, let's do it. Well, I'm here to tell you that you may want, not want to go full tilt. Um, you may want to work on the company, the product, mm -hmm. the service, while also keeping a day job, but it might not be a full-time job. It might not be you know, the corporate job. Um, mm -hmm. When I started Vocation Vacations, while I was building it out, before I launched it, in 2003, I'm like, what's a fun job? I was living in Portland, Oregon. What's a fun job that I could do? Make money. I don't, you know, I don't need a lot. I was pretty frugal. I could keep mm -hmm. my expenses down. What could I do? And I'm like, oh, I'll be a wine distributor. <laughs> right. That's so great. I got, a job, so great. I got yeah. a job working for a wine distributor and I traveled around the state of Oregon. Yeah. And got a little bit more fit. I was a lot less, I'm, I'm far heavier today than I was then <laughs> delivering all this wine. But my point is I delivered wine and sold wine mm -hmm. while building out vocation vacations. Mm -hmm. and I was meeting with a bunch of great folks, you know, along yeah. the way, winemakers and restaurateurs and cheese makers. And, you know, it was really wow. awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, um, and then before creating Revere or while creating Revere, building it out, um, you know, I did consulting work for a couple of other startups. Um, yeah. And so, you know, don't think of it in a binary black mm -hmm. and white. Mm -hmm. It goes back to resilience and flexibility. Yeah. As an entrepreneur, you have to be willing to um, multitask. Multitask yeah. is another thing that we didn't really talk about, but you, you, multitasking is critical. If you're not a good multitasker, you're not going to survive as a entrepreneur. Yeah, it almost sounds like I, I picture it multitasking on like, like, uh, to the, the, the fifth power, right? Like it's more than just multitasking, but lots of different things, uh, that you're managing at once. But I want to go back to what you just said with, with 
you know, being able to pursue a day job or part-time job, I think that's, that is really important because again, uh, for those of you who are listening, you may be thinking to yourself, well, gosh, I don't know if I can take that financial risk, or I don't know if I have the finances to do this. And I think it's really important to know, you know, this was something you did, you know, into your career after some time. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to build up to something yeah. over time and to kind of nurture an idea um, in its infancy. And that's okay. Um, and so, most yeah. of us, and most of us were not born into millions of dollars. Right, I, right. I certainly was not. So it's right. not like, you know, sure, you do have some folks who inherit money and, and mm -hmm. mom and dad, you know, mm -hmm. say, oh, you have a business right. idea here, here, take a million dollars. And, go and, and that's fantastic that some people have that, but a lot of people don't. Right. 99.9% .9 of us <laughs> don't. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, um, so, you know, to your point, don't be afraid of that. You just, mm -hmm. you know, um, and you can get funding, you mm -hmm. know, you can, mm -hmm. I've twice gone out and, and with two different companies, gotten a uh, seed investment to get things yeah. off. In addition to my own money and time mm -hmm. going into it, I got uh, friends and family investors on uh, with both Revere as well as with Vocation Vacations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could do a whole conversation about in investing and in gaining capital. That's a whole a, a, a bigger and topic for Plan B. <laughs> well, or sorry, and what? Probably, and I'm not the best person for that because I've only mm -hmm. done see you know uh, friends mm -hmm. and family. Mm -hmm. There are folks who have you know mm -hmm. folks at 1871. A lot of those folks are taking on um, seed angel investment and then. Mm -hmm. you you know, Series A while they're still in, at 1871. Right. And so if, if all this to say, I think it's important to know that, that the, the pool of startups and entrepreneurship and, and, and tech companies is very diverse. And so you, you can kind of uh, find your way to your own conceptualization of, of what that is. Um, one thing I'd like to kind of uh, end us out here as we kind of close out our time or, or come toward the end is I, I'd love to hear what predictions you may have being in um, an entrepreneurship space, a startup space, a tech space. I'd love to hear what you envision uh, happening in this space in the future and what, what our students and alumni can be thinking about. Well, I think, first of all, you, it, you know, it's all, it, most of it will be tech related, but not all of it is technology, if that mm. makes sense. So mm -hmm. everything that we do today or did pre-pandemic that was in person on the most part, in some way now has changed, you know, um, you know, with the exception of certain things, you know, in terms of, of you know, travel and, and, and sports and things like that. But everything is now virtual. So we, you know, with Revere Software, skills-based volunteering traditionally oftentimes is in person. It's not a group of, of, of employees to Rwanda to work on a project. And, and you know, that mm -hmm. is skills based mm -hmm. volunteering. Um, and there was virtual occurring for sure before, and we launched before the pandemic. But now virtual is here to stay. Yeah. So it's, a, and it's an and, it's not an or, it's an and. Companies, in our example, just within our world of Revere Software, companies are now saying, oh, we're gonna do the skills-based volunteering in person when post-COVID, and we're going to expand mm. our virtual uh, programming for groups and one-to-one -one and the like. So that's the Revere perspective. But beyond that, everything we touch, you know, picking up groceries, you know, going grocery shopping. I, you know, I've been sold now. I never pre-ordered groceries online before the pandemic. Now right. I don't envision going back. You know, yeah. I'm not a shopper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to to have my grocery order placed and to do curbside pickup, even post COVID, I expect that there will be a premium for that. You know, right, but, right. And um, you know, pre you've been able to purchase you know your tickets online for a movie theater for quite some time, but I think there's that's going to grow. Um, mm -hmm. More folks, you know, when we go back to the theaters, but we're going to have our ticket before we go, it's going to be on our phone, you know, mm -hmm. no one's going to, very few, there's going to come a point in five years where that front office, that person, you know, selling tickets at the front door that, you know, it's going to be an ATM type thing, mm -hmm. you know, machine, mm -hmm. um, right. done it online, and then restaurants, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're, you're ordering online today for pickup or delivery, okay, that's great, but I envision that you're going to 
pre-order before you go to the restaurant and you show up and you might end up skipping over that whole menu review because you've already done it at home and you've already or at the office and you've placed your order and you sit down and uh, you barely sit down and you know the wait staff comes over with the wine or the uh, you know cocktail that you uh, placed your order for you know it, yeah every aspect of life I think all that's going to occur mm. and I think it's important then for again students and alumni listening to to not take your ideas and conceptualizations of what you may want to do and think well you know I'll wait till a post-COVID life for that to happen or wait. like but in fact the world of an entrepreneur is to constantly be adapting to what is happening in real time and this is a great opportunity to say okay what what does that look like? Where are the gaps in services for people, and and how do we meet that need? Not just from you know the, a a a uh, uh, opportunistic perspective, but also what's good for society too. There's a lot of options here to really be thinking about how to connect the dots. Similar yep. to what you've said, your you know your company does. So I think. I think this has just been tremendous. Are there any final advice points you have for students or parting words you want folks to remember as they're thinking about launching their careers? Just have fun. Hmm. Big and zag and don't be afraid. You know, the, this too shall pass. Whatever moment, you know, uh, you're going to have issues, problems, whether you take a, a corporate job or hang your own shingle, you know, if you're yeah end up, you know, becoming an attorney or, you know, whatever the case may be. It's um, just have fun along the way and um, don't be afraid to, to pivot, to zig, to zag and make it interesting. I mean, yeah. it's like going back to that, um, you know, when I came back from Estonia, you know, to get interviews and say, well, I'm just back from Estonia. People were like, what? Yeah. So it was a great icebreaker when I was interviewing. It, mm -hmm. it set me apart as being a little different than mm -hmm. the others that I was, mm -hmm. so um, yeah, just don't be afraid, have fun with it. That is the best advice. I love ending on that. So students, uh, as you know, you can always connect with the Career Services Office. We are here to support you through this process. Brian, thank you so much for your time and uh, students, thanks for joining us. Have a great day. My pleasure, bye everybody.